be as big a man as his father. I don't mean clever, I mean big and strong. Not he. He's overbred, like one of those expensive little dogs. <laughs> I like a bit of a mongrel myself, whether it's a man or a dog, it's the best for every day. But we all have our tastes. What one woman's meat is another woman's poison. Bunny's a dear little fellow, but I never would have fancied him for a husband when I was your age. Yes, but he has some brains. He's not like all the rest. One can't have everything. Oh, yes, you're quite right, dear. Yeah. <coughs> quite, quite, quite right. It's a great thing to have brains. Look at what it's done to your father. And that's the reason I never said a word when you jilted poor Jerry McIntosh. Do you think marriage is as much a question of fancy as it used to be in your time and father's? Well, it wasn't much fancy with me, dear. Your father just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> and I was only too glad to be his wife instead of his shop girl. Still, it's curious, but I had more choice than you in a way, because, you see, I was poor, and there are so many more poor men than rich ones. <laughs> All sorts of men I could fall in love with, but I never seem to meet them. The real ones are too small, like Bunny, or too silly, like Jerry. Of course, one can get into a state about any man, or fall in love with him, if you like to call it that. But who would risk marrying a man for love? I shouldn't. I remember three girls at school who agreed that the one man you should never marry was the man you were in love with because it would make a perfect slave of you. One of them, to my certain knowledge, refused a man she was in love with and married another who was in love with her, and it turned out very well. <laughs> Does all that mean that you're not in love with Bunny? Oh, how could anybody be in love with Bunny? <laughs> me. I'm fond of him, and he never bores me, and I see that he's very clever. But I'm not what you call gone about him, if that's what you mean. <laughs>